Brain of Britain, the nationwide general knowledge contest, chaired by Russell Davis. Hello and a warm welcome back to Media City UK in Salford for another heat of what is the 70th Brain of Britain tournament. We're now halfway through the heat stage and some very impressive quizzes are already through to our semi-finals with some formidable scores among the runners-up vying for their place in those semi-finals too. Let's meet our contenders today. Hello, I'm Julie Byers. I'm a voluntary worker from Aberdeen. Hi, I'm Jude Cole. I'm a retired school teacher from Liverpool but currently living in Sheffield. Hello, I'm John Robinson and I'm an English teacher from Birmingham. Hello, I'm Hayden Thompson. I'm a retired technical author from Whaley Bridge in Derbyshire. You're all very welcome. You all have a trigger to flash a light at me to signal you'd like to come in for a bonus, but out of courtesy, please do give your fellow contenders their permitted 10 seconds thinking time before you start flashing in too impatiently. Fingers poised and good luck to all of you. Would you like to start us off today, please? Julie Byers. The so-called Edinburgh Seven were the first group of matriculated undergraduate female students at any British university. They began studying what at the University of Edinburgh in 1869? Medicine. It was. Hailed as the grandfather of satire, which English artist is noted for the scathing commentary he created through his graphic works, such as A Harlot's Progress, critiquing aspects of 18th century society? Uh, William Hogarth. Yes, his targets included politics, religion, and memorably, the evils of gin drinking. Which place in the ancient kingdom of Fife, granted city status in 2022, was a royal residence for several centuries, eight Scottish kings and many other royals being reputedly buried there? Oh, sorry, mind went blank. Okay, John Robinson. Dunfermline. It is Dunfermline, yes, indeed. Jude Cole, which British author's short story, The Company of Wolves, was adapted into a film of the same name in 1984? Angela Carter. It was, the last story in her collection, The Bloody Chamber. In the First World War, who were the WAAC? Uh, the Women's Auxiliary Army Corps. Yes, I'll give you that, because you've got them actually the wrong way around. Women's Army Auxiliary Corps, oh. what's the difference? The unit was formed in 1917 to free up more men to go and fight. It was the first time women had served in the British Army, other than as nurses. Cujo, a 1981 Stephen King novel, which was made into a film two years later, features a dog which becomes a killer after being bitten by a rabid bat. What breed is the dog? St Bernard? It is. Stephen King claims he got the idea for the story after he was almost attacked by a St Bernard dog at a gas station in New England. The name of what ubiquitous foodstuff is used in Italy as a word for a reel of cinematic film? Rigatoni? No. John Robinson? Pasta? No. Plenty more foodstuff. No? No more, no. It's pizza. So we come to John Robinson now. According to the title of comedian Ramesh Ranganathan's podcast, what genre of music saved his life? Hip-hop. Yes. Which North Korean leader was born on the day the Titanic sank? And I like their full name, please. Uh, Kim Jong-il? No. Hayden Thompson? Kim Jong-un? No. No more tries? No. No, it's Kim Il-sung. April the 15th, 1912. Kim Il-sung's birthday, the Day of the Sun, as it's called, is celebrated every year as a public holiday in North Korea. Hayden Thompson, 2023 marks the 75th anniversary of Britain's National Health Service. Which then Minister of Health in Clement Attlee's post-war government officially launched the service at Manchester's Park Hospital in 1948. Nye Bevin. Oh, Nye Bevin, yes, is right. 
1979, it was revealed that the Queen's art advisor, Anthony Blunt, had been a spy supplying information to Russia, and the fourth man in a ring of such agents. Can you name the other three? Guy Burgess, Donald McLean, and Kim Philby. That's absolutely right, yes. What middle name was shared by John Lennon and the late Labour politician Dennis Healy? Winston. Yes. A standard set of 28 dominoes containing tiles from double zero to double six has how many pips or dots in total? 168. That's an average of six per tile, and that's the right answer. In reference to the date on which it began, which 20th century conflict is often referred to as the 625 war by the inhabitants of one of the two warring states? The Yom Kippur War? No. Uh, John Robinson? The Egypt-Israel War? No. Any more wars? Jude Cole? Vietnam? No. No, okay. Uh, you're getting closer with uh, Vietnam. It was the Korean War. The reference to the date it started, June the 25th, 1950, 6 25, 1950. And that is the end of the first round. And everybody has scored healthily. Julie Byers, two. John Robinson, two. Jude Cole, three. Hayden Thompson, four. No problem opening the scoring, so it's back to Julie Byers. The next round begins with an extra extract for you to listen to. It's from a long-running radio series which ran from 1946 to 1992. In this edition from 1984, presenter Brian Johnston visits Stockport and meets with rat catcher and cabaret performer Ken Edwards. Can you tell me the name of the series? Where do you catch the rats? Uh, on the River Mersey, on tips, in factories, almost anywhere. How many do you catch there? Were there a lot of rats in Stockport? There were until I started, but uh, I do take some home. It's one of the perks of the job. <laughs> in addition to being a rat catcher, he's a rat collector. In your house here, in the garden, in cages, how many rats have you got? Around about a hundred, give and take a few litters. And what about your neighbours? they mind knowing that there are rats in the garden next door? What neighbours? Have you got any neighbours here? They've all gone. <laughs> <laughs> Down your way. Yes. 2023 marks the 25th anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement. A Belfast concert for Yes in May 1998 produced a defining image of Northern Ireland's progress to peace. Pictured either side of the U2 singer Bono, arms aloft, are the then Ulster Unionist leader and the then SDLP leader. Can you name them both? Uh, Jerry, um, oh, no, sorry. Okay. John Robinson can? Ian Paisley and Bertie Ahern? No. Hayden Thompson? Jerry Adams, um, Ian Paisley? Nope. I think that's it, isn't it? No. They were David Trimble and John Hume. To Jude Cole now, which BBC TV drama series created by Heidi Thomas was originally based on the memoirs of Jennifer Worth, who worked with the community of St John the Divine at their convent in the East End in London? Call the midwife? Yes. Dan Donovan, Jim Kerr, Liam Gallagher and Jeremy Healy have all been the husbands of which actress and singer? Patsy Kensett. Yes. A manor house called Rosmersholm is the setting and provides the title of a play of 1886 by which writer? George Bernard Shaw. Mm, no. John Robinson? Ibsen. And Ibsen is the right answer. And here is your next question. In March 2023, which two football managers were the first to be inducted into the recently established Premier League Hall of Fame? Sir Alex Ferguson and Arsene Wenger. Yes. In June 2023, which Austrian's final painting, Lady with a Fan, Dame mit Fächer, sold for £85.3 million, making it the most valuable work of art ever sold at auction in Europe? Gustav Klimt. Gustav Klimt, yes. It was sold to a Hong Kong collector who triumphed in a four-way bidding war at Sotheby's. In terms of building material, what connects Tattershall Castle, 
Hesmonsue Castle, Sissinghurst Castle, and St. James's Palace. Mottland Orb? No. Hayden Thompson? Bricks? Yes, they're all <laughs> brick built. Yes, it's mostly true to say that our brick built castles are really large manor houses in disguise. Hayden Thompson's turn. After Henry VIII, who was the second Tudor monarch to be excommunicated by the Catholic Church in 1570? Elizabeth I. Is the right answer. First broadcast on BBC Radio Nottingham in February 1968 and hosted by Tony Church, what are they up to now? is considered to have been Britain's first example of what now ubiquitous broadcasting format. Panel game? No. Yes, John Robertson. Reality TV? No. Julie, have a go. Talk show? No, it was a phone-in show. The segment encouraged listeners to vent their ire at the decisions made by Nottingham's public officials, with such success that local switchboards were often overwhelmed. That's the end of the second round. Julie Byers has three, Jude Cole five, John Robinson five, Hayden Thompson six. Now, ah, that's all very thrilling. Let's give our brains a few minutes breather and take a couple of questions from our inbox sent to us by a listener hoping to beat the brains. Jonathan Wright is among the many hundreds of you who've submitted ideas over the past year or so. If working as a team, our contenders today can't get the correct answers to Jonathan's questions, we'll be sending him a book voucher prize. Jonathan's questions are linked in theme and they are both about the natural world and taxonomy in particular. Here's his first question. An echidna is a spiny anteater, one of the very few creatures on Earth which are monotremes or egg-laying mammals. But the taxonomic genus echidna is actually given to a different creature altogether, and it's not a mammal. What is it? Is a sea urchin? I don't know. Yeah, I think it is something like that. A sea urchin? Oh, is that all the discussion you're going to have? <laughs> <laughs> You've decided, have you? Yeah. Well, you're right about the sea. You've got that far. It was the moray eel. Oh, yeah. There are several different, different species of moray eel within the genus Echidna. In fact, the taxonomic name of the Echidna, the mammal, is Tachyglossus aculeatus. Well, that didn't take you long. Perhaps you should <laughs> think longer about this one. Here's his second question. Another egg-laying mammal, famously, is the platypus. But again, it doesn't belong to the genus platypus, which denotes very different creatures indeed. What creatures? Something to do with the, is it something to do with the foot? No, I think it's something to do with Latin the foot. Yeah, I thought the it might be like foot. flat, a flat foot or something. Yeah, something like that. That. I don't know if it's some sort of like worm or something. Or something like that. Flat worms, I think, a platy helminthes or something. Um, so it could be some kind of worm. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah. Flat worm. A flat worm. No, I mean, again, you're in the the territory. They are weevils. Platypus is a genus of weevil in the family Circulionidae, yes. And the mammal we know as the platypus has the taxonomic name Ornithorhynchus anatinus. In both cases, the echidna and the platypus were given those generic names until scientists realized that they had already been used for other animals. <laughs> so it's all a confusion, really. But congratulations, Jonathan. You well and truly stumped the brains with those questions, and your reward will be a book voucher, which we'll lose no time in getting to you. And in addition, of course, our audience here in Salford will show its appreciation with what can only be classified as a plausus maximus. Let's resume the contest then with everything still to play for. Fingers back on buttons and we'll start the next round with you again, Julie Byers. Which of the Bronte sisters was the only one to get married? Charlotte. Yes, she married Arthur Bell Nichols, a curate, in 1854. Which city in Uzbekistan, one of the oldest in all of Central Asia, 
was known as Maracanda in the 4th century BCE, was the capital of Sogdiana, and was captured by Alexander the Great in 329 BCE. Samarkand. Yes. Which heroine of the slavery era, deliverer of the famous speech known as Ain't I a Woman, became the first African-American woman to have a statue in the Capitol building in Washington when a memorial bust of her was unveiled in 2009. Harriet Tubman. It wasn't Harriet Tubman this time, no, John Robinson. Sojourner Truth. Sojourner Truth, yes. She was born Isabella Baumfrey in 1797. Jude Cole now, and there's music with your next question. 2023 marks the 60th anniversary of the premiere of a musical satirising the First World War and war in general, developed by Joan Littlewood and first performed at the Theatre Royal Stratford East. After you've heard the opening song, I'd simply like you to name the musical. Now that he'd row, row, row Way up the river he would row, row, row A hockey dipper that he'd kiss her now and then She would tell him when They'd fool around and fool around And then they'd kiss again And then he'd row, row, row Oh, what a lovely war. Yes, the name of uh, Joan Little, but always evokes the title of Oh, what a lovely war to me. You're quite right. In the opening line of the song Nothing Compares to You, written by Prince and recorded by the late Sinead O'Connor, how many hours and how many days is it since you took your love away? 14 days and 12 hours. <laughs> Good try. I'm not that far off, I'm sure, but what do you think? John Robinson. Seven hours and 15 days. That is the exact amount, yes. Seven hours and 15 days. And it's your go. Located in the Sudirman range of the Papua province, Punjak Jaya is the highest mountain in which Southeast Asian country? Indonesia. Yes. For his role as Saul Goodman in Breaking Bad and its spin-off Better Call Saul, which actor has received five nominations for the Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Drama Series? Bob Odenkirk. That's the right name. Which classic television comedy series featured a regular character called Luke Warm? Porridge. Yes, one of the early roles of Christopher Biggins. What was the name of the captain of the 1620 voyage of the Pilgrim Fathers ship at the Mayflower? Oh. Captain Smith. Mm, no. Does anyone remember this? I think not. Smith was not far off. His name was Jones. Christopher Jones. <laughs> Christopher Jones. And without him, the pilgrims wouldn't have made it across the Atlantic at all. The rigours of the return journey undermined his health and he died very soon after. Hayden Thompson, what name is given to the phenomenon characterised by a change in pitch or frequency of a sound when its source is moving towards or away from an observer? The Doppler effect. Yes, or Doppler shift. Lake Kyoga, literally the place of bathing in Runyoro language, is a large shallow lake in which landlocked country in East Africa? Tanzania? Nope. John Robinson? Uganda. The Republic of Uganda is right, bringing us to the end of another round. Julie Byers, five. Jude Cole, six. Hayden Thompson, seven. John Robinson, 11. Well done. We're back with Julie Byers again. During the Tour de France bicycle race, different coloured jerseys reflect where certain riders stand in the competition. Which colour is worn by the overall time leader? Yellow. Yes. The BBC television sitcom The Good Life, starring Richard Bryars and Felicity Kendall, was set in which suburban neighbourhood of south-west London? Surbiton. Yes, although outdoor filming actually took place in the northern Great London suburb of Northwood. The late fashion designer and environmental campaigner Vivienne Westwood summed up her life's mission in a simple sentence, saying that the only reason she was here was to destroy one particular word. What word was this? No. No. Right. John Robinson? Taboo. No. Hayden Thompson? Boring. 
No. Jude Cole. Couture? No, conformity. That was the word she chose. Jude Cole now. Hope Street links the Roman Catholic and Anglican cathedrals in which English city? Liverpool. Yes. In July 2023, which former Liverpool footballer became the manager of Saudi pro league club El Etifak? Stephen Gerrard. Yes, right answer. Here's a quote from the Shakespeare play Cymbeline. Her chambers are all locked and there's no answer. That will be given to the louts of noise we make. The character whose locked chambers are being referred to is the title character's only daughter. What's her name? Imogen. Imogen, yes. There is no answer from the chamber because she has fled to Milford Haven of all places. Which county town in Northern Ireland is the seat of two archbishops, one Catholic and one Church of Ireland, each bearing the title Primate of All Ireland? Derry? No. Hayden Thompson? Armagh. Armagh is correct, yes. And it's John Robinson's turn. An extract for you now from the BBC podcast series You're Dead to Me, hosted by Greg Jenner. In this episode, we hear literary expert Dr. Corinne Throsby, but which person is in the spotlight? Yeah, so she was born in 1797 um, in Somerstown in London, and she had these two brilliant parents. And the household that William Godwin ran was one of, you know, all these amazing um, intellectuals, scientists, academics, writers of the time were coming around to his house. And the influences of all these people can be seen in her later work and her lifelong love of writing. Mary Shelley. Mary Wollstonecraft Shelley, yes indeed. Benzene, a colourless liquid primarily used in the production of polystyrene, was discovered in 1825 by which prominent scientist? Kekulé? Uh, no. Hayden Thompson? Priestley? No. No. It was Faraday, Michael Faraday. Uh, Hayden Thompson's turn. In the name of the United Nations environmental body, the IPCC, what do the letters CC stand for? Charity Commission. Mm, no. John Robinson. Copyright control. No. Jude Cole. Cricket Club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what the two were. No. Julie Byers going to have a go? No. No. Okay. It's climate change. It's the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. And that's the end of another round. Julie Byers now seven, Hayden Thompson eight, Jude Cole nine, John Robinson 12. <laughs> With which news we have to begin the final round of the contest, folks. And it's just about winnable by any of you. Julie Byers, which Renaissance polymath published a model of the universe in his book on the revolutions of the celestial spheres just before his death in 1543? Copernicus. Copernicus, Nicolaus Copernic. The actress Riley Keough, who has starred in recent years in the films American Honey and Zola, is the eldest granddaughter of which man who himself starred in over 30 films in the 1950s and 60s? Oh. Cary Grant. Mm, no. Jude Cole. Elvis Presley. It is Elvis Presley, yes. And it's your turn. In which Jane Austen novel did the Tilneys invite Catherine Morland to stay at their home? North Anger Abbey. Yes, which is indeed the home in question. In which historic city in Belgium will you find a small rectangular lake called Minnevata, also known as the Lake of Love? Um, Bruges? Bruges, yes. After winning the Cook of the Realm competition, the Devon farmer's wife, Gwen Troke, was invited by the BBC reality series The Big Time to prepare a banquet for Edward Heath and Earl Mountbatten in a 1976 episode that ended the culinary career of which broadcaster? Fanny Craddock? Yes. Gwen Troke prepared duck with bramble sauce, which Fanny Craddock greeted with the comment, Blackberries may do in Devon, but you're among professionals now. There was a nationwide media outcry, and she never worked on television again. 
in which 1922 novel do four women, Mrs. Wilkins, Mrs. Arbuthnot, Mrs. Fisher, and Lady Caroline Dester, respond to an advert in the Times addressed to those who appreciate wisteria and sunshine? No, I don't know. Sorry. Uh, right. Julie Byers? Enchanted April. By Elizabeth von Arnhem. You're absolutely right. And we've come to John Robinson. What's the name of the great highland system of North America, which extends for almost 2,000 miles from the Canadian province of Newfoundland and Labrador down to central Alabama in the United States? Pan American Highway? No. Uh, Hayden Thompson? The Appalachians. The Appalachian Mountains is right. And it's your turn. In June 2023, the Royal Northern College of Music marked its 50th anniversary with a gala concert broadcast on BBC Radio 3. Here, the ensemble performs a popular piece by the Norwegian composer Edvard Grieg, which celebrates a humanist playwright. Can you name the work? Is it Peer Gint? No. No guesses? There's a point in this. Yes, Julie Byers. Ibsen? No. John Robinson? Strindberg? No, no. It's the Holberg Suite, composed by Grieg in 1884 to mark the 200th anniversary of the birth of Dano-Norwegian Ludwig Holberg. Bringing this seventh heat of Brain of Britain to a close, with the final scores looking like this. Julie Byers, nine. Hayden Thompson, nine. John Robinson, 12. Jude Cole, 13. That means it's Jude Cole who will be returning in a couple of months' time for the semi-finals, and very well done. Wonderful scoring. Thanks to all our contenders today for an excellent contest, and to you for listening. We'll be here in Salford again next time. I hope you'll be able to join us. Goodbye. <laughs>